The potential of private 5G deployments by enterprises continues to be a major talking point in an industry desperate to find new areas of growth. But what's actually happening in the market? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Aram Partouche, Innovation Development Director at Colt Technology Services. So Aaron, great to see you again. Thanks very much for joining us today. Now, when you took to the stage at Telecom TV's Great Telco debate in London last December, you were convinced that current operational technology or OT deployments would ultimately be replaced with sophisticated, integrated edge systems that would run multiple applications. Uh, are you still convinced about this? Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Um, according to recent ID IDC analysis, we expect 23% increase in operational data produced by an average factory over the next 12 months. So we will reach something like 320 petabytes per year in 2023. Uh, manufacturing organizations are integrating new technologies, including AIs, machine learning, cloud, and analytics to transform their factory processes. And with today's data-driven manufacturing, edge to cloud architectures are central in creating, analyzing, and distributing data from the shop floor to the top floor to allow for better decision making. However, this data still mainly reside on-premise. Edge platform running system applications is one of the most efficient way to benefit from local processing or local storage and of course but also directly connected or securely connected to cloud platforms this is today the most efficient way to migrate these applications to the cloud so yes i still think that ot uh, systems will rely on these edge platforms on premise now, there's been a lot of talk in recent years, a lot of hype about private 5G, but how is the actual market for private 5G shaping up in 2023, do you think? It appears that there's a little less confidence in immediate enterprise uptake currently. And I agree. <laughs> I think firstly that there is a hype around 5G, stimulated by public initiatives, while the ecosystem is not yet fully ready. And we were seeing when we were also in the telecom uh, debate uh, show in December. And most of the applications could run today on 4G. So there's a kind of mismatch between the what is requested by some of uh, the customers and what we should do. In, the, in addition, there is a lack of vertical knowledge and expertise in, in the telco industry. So we are still probably at a stage where we try to demonstrate the business value of the private 5G. So what do you think are the major challenges that the industry needs to overcome if private 5G networks are to be uh, broadly deployed? Uh, what, what needs to happen right now to help move things on? <laughs> it's a broad, broad question and difficult one, I guess. But yes, let's look at what we see today as a challenge and what we should have to, 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 to solve. Sales cycles are quite long, for sometimes small and bespoke projects. A lot of actors are emerging in, in this market, but very few have deep cellular expertise. And we don't, I mean, call time, so we, but we recognize that it's quite important to have that. In ideal world, also, it would be great if we could simplify the installation and management of this type of network like Wi-Fi today. And there are, there are some technology vendors that are promising, but it's still very mar uh, still marginal. Uh, last but not least, we still have to identify the end core use cases per vertical, the one that will help us to justify, that will help us to justify the investment. So to unlock this situation, the telco industry will probably have to, to invest 
in specific capabilities and potentially have a different sales approach, which is a challenge for a business, for an industry that was quite horizontal so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a, a lot to be done uh, by the sound of it. And like you said, it's not enterprises are not going to make decisions overnight and suddenly decide, oh, yes, let's have a, a 5G network as there. So a, a lot from both sides of the fence to figure out there. Um, uh, but obviously, you know, the, the there is a long term view that uh, that 5G private networks uh, will be deployed by quite a lot of companies around the world. So what is Colt uh, doing in this market? And uh, do you have any private 5G uh, customers or partners at this stage? So we, we have a private 5G lab where we are, we are deploying open run 5G with a real estate customer. We don't have the ambition to, to, to um, deploy our own private 5G solution. We will probably work with experts. As I said, the expertise, particularly in cellular, is quite important. There is some vertical that is particularly of interest for us, like smart manufacturing, which probably is one of the largest emerging digital transformation market, particularly in, in cold region, which is Europe, Southeast Asia, and the US. And we think that we are well positioned with our network capabilities and the partnership ecosystem that we have developed to support the end-to-end -end solution and field ecosystem. We talked a lot with these manufacturing customers about this challenge they have today to move to the industry 4.0 and they are common facts that are, that are raised by them, like the, the, the fact that they have to change today the architecture we have today that is quite centralized to move more application to the cloud. So we need that to scale, to leverage AI machine learning, but at the same time, they used to be quite not really cloud friendly. So this is a kind of challenge. They need to move fast to stay competitive. We we have an increasing volume of data and it could be huge, as I said at the beginning, because of the sensors of that data. But at the same time, we have to more and more to be application aware, to, so to implement more and more network slicing to distinguish critical data, so the data that could have an impact on the production or on the delivery. We also have to more and more consider the application requirements, so in terms of latency, in terms of boundaries, and security on top of that is hot. So this is what has been raised, have been raised by, by our customers, and we have built a customer lab with, with IBM to showcase different manufacturing applications so we were so it's we are more looking at the use cases and the application and we could add after the private 5g element on top of that so the type of application we are looking at is ai based uh, visual inspection predictive maintenance or threat detections and we we expect here to indeed to position ourselves in the edge to cloud uh, market, so providing a digital infrastructure relying on four pillars, smart one, but we prefer different one to meet application demands, uh, security uh, to manage risk, cyber risk for both IT and OT, edge, of course, so seamless application, which could be also virtual 5G application, but we can simply manage and deploy in our edge hardware platform and wireless to reach remote site with with uh, with uh, back all, back all by by cold so we as i said we will rely on, on partners when we will have to deploy complex part 5g we see some use cases that could be of interest maybe in the future for for cold particularly in the fixed wireless uh, side we already have uh, announced some deployment, some some new solution relying on 4G, 5G. It's based on public mobile uh, public mobile operators, but in some area we have difficulties to have a good 4G coverage or good 5G coverage. It's even worse. So potentially the private 5G could be a way to have a fixed wireless access. We have tested some indoor 
uh, use cases with our real estate uh, customer. And we expect also to make over tests from outdoor to indoor, potentially in London. So it's something that we are working on. Okay, well, that uh, all sounds like uh, good steps forward in terms of the development of the market. And uh, it sounds like there's a lot there that enterprises would be uh, interested in finding out more about. So uh, a long way to go with this market, uh, Aaron. And uh, thanks very much for joining us today and, and giving us an update. And uh, look forward to talking with you in the future to see how this market develops. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Ray.